Hi, I'm Simon Forrest from Imagination Technologies and we're here today at the BT Innovation 2017 event to showcase some of the technology that we have and other partners here are also at this event to show the collaboration that BT has with their partners, suppliers and other technology providers. What we're demonstrating here today at Imagination is how we are going to re-architect the home gateway and how our technology can actually improve the operator's position and place them at the heart of the action. Today, this is a common scenario. You see a number of IoT hubs. These really only exist for one reason, and that is to provide all these different networking standards which are not exactly on the existing hub today. The more of these devices we have, the more complicated it becomes, and of course you get this clutter of different devices. This also increases the attack surface. If any one of these devices is insecure, or any of the devices that connect to it are insecure, then these have a direct route to the existing home hub. So what we're doing here today really is working with Interseed, our security partner, and the Purple Foundation, the trust continuum work that those guys are doing to look at the standards and the, the methodologies that need to be applied to really secure the architecture of the home hub. Now the challenge really is to how do we move this architecture forward? How do we re-architect re this? And what we're using here is the MIPS processor, and we're using a technology that we have embedded in this system called um, a hardware virtualization. This allows the, the software to be re-architected so that BT now have their own operator control domain on the, on the home hub. And then all those different services that would normally be running on the IoT hubs that you see here are now available in their own secure and isolated containers, all protected by the hardware virtualization. The other thing you will now notice here is that we've taken the set of networking standards that would normally be sat on the IoT hubs and we've now placed them into the center of the home network. These are now running existing on the, on the existing gateway. And we, what the operator can now do is virtualize all these different networks and manage them effectively. So we no longer have several networks overlapping. It leads to much more reliability and control for the operator. All these different containers, of course, can be added and subtracted as you see fit. So it gives flexibility to the consumer. They can choose services throughout their contract. And also the operator has the opportunity to add and subtract these services. So if any one of these services is safe, hacked or is, is insecure in any way, it can be removed from the gateway immediately. So we believe this new architecture gives a lot of benefits. Not only are we removing the clutter in the home, but we're also consolidating all the network standards, and we're basically placing the operator directly in the heart of the action. All of these devices, of course, are over the top today. The operator just is a carrier for this technology and for the data. And in here, they no longer are. They are at the center of the action they can control what is on their home gateway, they can control what the home gateway can do, and the applications support to the outside world. So we truly believe this architecture is innovative and unique, and uh, we're working, as I said, with Interseed, our security partners, and Purple Foundation on the Trust Continuum work to make this happen. Now what I'll do is I'll hand over to Sean Raby, my colleague, who will take you through the demonstration. My name is Sean Raby, I'm Solutions Engineering Manager for Imagination Technologies. Um, and as Simon just explained about the demonstration that we have here, uh, we're going to look at how we will provision a new service on this home gateway um, dynamically in the field um, and show the separation between the different domains using hardware virtualization. So let's have a look at the demo. So here we've got an evaluation board that's showing a representation of a home hub. So we've got an internet connection that's coming in uh, through this cable here, and we've got a Wi-Fi adapter, and there could be other radio adapters on this. So this is a fresh out of the box uh, home gateway, and we're gonna have someone watching YouTube, and that's gonna continue to run throughout this demo. So there's no interruption of service. Let's say that was a critical service by provisioning and removing or changing settings on this home hub. We don't wanna have an interruption uh, in the service uh, that's been provided in the home. So now we're going to provision a new device. Let's say we have purchased this new um, heart rate monitor and we want to add that in. So on our uh, hub application management software, uh, this is connected via Wi-Fi to the board uh, and I've just connected it uh, into the software, add a new device and then scan the QR code that's on the box uh, of the uh, device that we got. We recognize that it's a heart rate monitor and we would like to add it. But it's my heart rate monitor and I want to unify it to myself. So I'm going to add 
I'm going to put my fingerprint on there to represent that it, it's mine. And then we see that it's a unified service that's been requested. What's happened there is that the phone's connected to the operator domain in here. That's then gone up to the um, operator's uh, application service that's been enabled with MyTAM from Interseed. That then adds the identity of that person onto the software that comes back down. And at every point um, uh, across all those touch points across uh, that channel, um, Interseed guarantee uh, the security and the identity of uh, that application. So uh, one, when it's up in the cloud, BT have, can add their logic into it to say, is this a service that the uh, operator would like to add? Is this something that the person has subscribed to? And in that way, they can monetize these services. Or is this something that we need to build an external party in order to, um, to again, generate revenue? So they can add their business logic to where, and then they have a knowledge of what's been installed on this home hub that's uh, inside each of the user's home. So now when, when we have a look back at the uh, application, we see that it's installed. There was no interruption in the uh, connection in the home. Um, and once we've done that provisioning, we can then go into an operation phase. So then in the operation phase, we have our heart rate monitor, which is on our patient over here. Uh, and that is using whichever wireless protocols are supported by the device and the board. Uh, so this is provided, in this case it's a demonstration board, but that's being provided by the healthcare provider. That's pushing onto the service that we've installed, again, from the healthcare provider. And at that point, uh, the, the identity is being added onto that, and any encryption that they want to do on that data, and any business log they want to add, because uh, it's their service, they can do that. And then it's being pushed up to the, um, the, the, the provider's cloud service. And at that point, the operator is out of the route of that data, because they don't have to, they don't want to have anything to do with that data because it's um, got privacy issues because it's uh, the, the user's data. In this case, it's a heart rate. It could be other things, um, and so that's going direct to the provider. So then, once that information is out in the cloud and out in that on that provider's cloud, then we can use that data, and that that provider can then add their value into that service. In this case, we have an external to the home uh, monitoring that allows the uh, outside the home monitoring of this patient. And let's say their blood pressure drops and we need to get um, a, uh, a fast response out to this patient, that could be monitored out the home. This, of course, is just a demonstration of the, the capabilities, but once the data is out of the home and in that provider, then they, they can do what they need to do. Or they could raise, in this case, uh, alerts um, to the relevant authorities uh, to do what they need to do. As Sean and I have demonstrated today, we really do believe that Imagination has a very, very unique architecture here. We're basically removing all of that consumer premises equipment clutter, the networking is now all consolidated onto one device, and we're reducing the attack surface available to these, the, the hackers out there, anybody who might want to attack these devices. The new architecture gives the operator flexibility it gives them ability to uh, monetize different services that they may not have been able to in the other architecture. And it really does place the operator at the heart of the action. And we believe this is a true service and a true brand new architecture for the new home hubs of the future. For more information on the technology we've just shown you today, you can look at Imagination's website, which is imgtech.com, where you can find information on exactly the demonstration we've shown and also documentation on this. If you want to talk to our security partners, Interseed, you can go to their website, interseed.com, and they will uh, give you all the information you need on the security aspects of it. And then finally, Imagination is working with uh, Purple Foundation, uh, and they, we're looking at a standards organization there called the Trust Continuum, and they are putting together all the applications, the standards, and all the software solutions that are going to be needed in order to enhance the home gateway and truly deliver this, this, this technology.